One day back in 1995, I was looking through the newspaper and after I finished with the comics, I started looking through the Best Buy and the Circuit City ads and I saw something I had never seen before, a brand new Sega portable system. The Game Gear was one of my favorite things on the planet. Like it had a backlit screen, I could play it in the car when I was on long trips and I loved it. I loved my Game Gear. And this for the first time was something new from Sega. It was the Genesis Nomad. Now this is a portable Genesis system. That's right, it's a home console packed into a portable system. And this is kind of the first time that that's been done. Like there was a master system adapter for the Game Gear. So like that sort of was a thing, but this was a dedicated system for Sega Genesis games, which I had a lot of and I really liked them. So I had to have this thing. So. I begged my mom to put my Game Gear up for sale because I had no money as a little kid. Sold that and bought the Sega Nomad. And I must have been the only one who did so because it didn't last very long. But I loved my Nomad. Like I played this all the time. And then, you know, I went out and got another Game Gear because I missed my Game Gear games. So the Sega Nomad, is it any good? Does it live up to its potential? Is it a forgotten gem or something that we should just all agree to forget? Let's find out. All right, let's give this thing the retro game core treatment and really take a look at the Sega Genesis Nomad's hardware. This thing is an absolute unit. It's a solid chunk of industrial design with some wild late 90s era design quirks like the off-kilter quadrilateral shape rather than being just a boring old rectangle. The bottom is flat, but the top is at an angle with the cartridge still going in straight rather than matching the angle, so totally rad, right? The Nomad feels great to hold though. It's solid, it feels great in the hand, and it's a good weight. I mean, without the batteries at least. There's actually grips in the back for each hand with ridges for your fingers. The D-pad of this thing has no business being this good. It's absolutely fantastic and I actually prefer it over real Genesis controllers. If I could get this D-pad on a modern controller, I'd be perfectly happy using it. I would argue the Nomad might have an even more comfortable D-pad than the Super Nintendo, which in my mind is like the gold standard. There's also a full six button layout. The original Genesis controller only had three buttons, so it's nice to see all six for fighting games and full compatibility with all the Sega Genesis library. Video games have largely standardized around a four button diamond layout these days, but I still really like the increased control possibilities of six buttons. I mean, just see what the Nintendo 64 was able to do with it. There are switches on the sides to control volume, the screen's contrast, and power at the top. You won't be attaching a 32X or Sega CD to this thing, but there are ports for connecting to the TV and attaching a second controller. Oh, and looks like it's time for a cat break. Here I have Sophie, who isn't a cat exactly, but she kind of looks like one. Say hi, Sophie. Now, keep in mind, the Sega Nomad is not emulation. This is a real Sega Genesis in a portable shell. That means we're talking about a Motorola 68000 clocked at 7.6 megahertz, 64 kilobytes of RAM, and another 64 kilobytes of video RAM, along with a combo Yamaha and Texas Instruments sound chip. That's blast processing right there, folks. It may not sound like much, but it makes a Game Boy look like a potato with batteries by comparison. Despite all this, in use, the system doesn't get hot or noisy at all, even though this is a freaking home console packed into a portable shell from the 1990s. These days, I'm so used to cutting edge portable devices like the Steam Deck throwing out hot air with a fan that this aspect of the Nomad is almost shocking. There's no dip in performance due to overheating or anything, it just works. And that's kind of a miracle. Every game in the Genesis library plays on the Nomad, all of them. Okay, there is reports that there's a single game that requires the use of a reset button and the reset button isn't on the Nomad, but you, you get it. If you're not using a Sega CD or a 32X add-on, this is a no compromise Genesis. So let's talk about the screen a little bit. The screen on the Nomad is super high resolution for its time. It's standard definition, having unmatched pixel density due to squeezing a full SD single into that tiny little screen. 
Considering the LCD tech of the day, this thing is surprisingly good and a huge step up from the Sega Game Gear. It also far outclasses systems that would come years later like the Game Boy Color and even the early Game Boy Advance by actually having a backlight and a higher pixel density. Now, viewing angles are terrible by today's standards and blacks look awful and there's a whole lot of smearing. I mean, just look at it compared to like a Miu Mini. But come on, this was the mid 90s. CRT still had a decade of domination ahead of them and this Nomad holds up compared to LCD panels that would come out up to 10 years later. One of the iPhone's greatest innovations was the glass display. Because the Nomad suffers from the same problem that plagued everything from the original Game Boy of the late 80s to the iPods of the 2000s. Plastic screens that are super easily scratched. When the screen is on, the scratches aren't as noticeable, but it looks horrible now despite my mostly gentle care of this thing over the years. Between the fantastic ergonomics, an acceptable speaker, and good for its time screen, playing the Nomad today feels pretty dang good. You know, I'll turn it on just to test a game or to check something and find myself sucked in just playing the game. And that never happens on the original Game Gear or Game Boy, where the experience leaves much to be desired. I can just forget that I'm using a Nomad and just have fun with it. If there was one fatal flaw in the Nomad, it was the battery life, in that it didn't have any. Unlike the Game Gear, there's no built-in battery compartments. Instead, you had to attach this six battery monstrosity onto the back of the system. Because this is full-on console hardware with a backlit screen, it drained through batteries even quicker than the Game Gear. Personally, I left a battery pack adapter at home and just used this thing connected to a car power outlet or a wall outlet. Even with this limitation, I still got a ton of use out of my Nomad back in the day. This wasn't a system that you would just put in a coat pocket and get some gaming done while your dad shopped at the store, but this was a home console that you could play in the car or while at your friend's house. One cool detail is that this system shared the same power adapter as the Game Gear, allowing you to use all the same adapters for both. Cool move, Sega. Cool move. The Sega Nomad wasn't just a portable system though. No, this is still a full Genesis, and you can plug it into a TV and boom, you have a no compromises home console with the same quality single that a Genesis could output. Yes, decades before the Nintendo Switch existed, Sega made a true portable console hybrid. When it's plugged into a TV, you'll see a picture outlet mirrored on both the TV and the Nomad itself. Now, there are some limitations. You have to use the console itself as the controller, which, you know, the unit feels great as a controller, but you're limited by how long your AV cable is, which usually isn't that long. Also, once you have a power cable, AV cable, and second player controller all plugged in at once, it can get real unwieldy. But I definitely used it like this back in the day to play some fighting games with friends. Another awkward element of this whole thing was the fact that Genesis cartridges were not designed for a portable system. In fact, some of them were downright huge. Sonic 3 combined with Sonic and Knuckles is one of the greatest Genesis games of all time, but it makes for a comically unwieldy experience when plugged into the Nomad. While most regular sized Genesis games were fine, the larger size still made them a pain to carry around with the system. The smaller size of portable Game Gear cartridges or Game Boy cartridges makes it easy to bring a handful with you, while a collection of Genesis games takes up way more space. Plus, Genesis games didn't come with protective cases like Game Boy and Game Gear cartridges did, leaving them exposed to damage being tossed around in a bag. Once, when cartridges were plentiful and cheap, this wasn't a big deal to me, but now as retro gaming explodes, the idea of just letting Genesis games bang around in a backpack makes me break out in a cold sweat. The Sega Nomad really amplified the dynamic that already existed between the Sega Game Gear and the Nintendo Game Boy. The Nomad was way more advanced than the Game Boy, which at this time was still monochrome. The color that wasn't even out yet, it wouldn't come out for years. And it was really better in every way, technically. But the Game Boy was portable and it was cheap and you could take it with you anywhere and actually run it off batteries. Whereas this thing like, you needed a wall outlet, and it was really only practical in very specific situations. So the Game Boy kept on trucking, and the Nomad is kind of just a curiosity. I love it. I think it's an amazing example of what Sega design can do, especially in the mid-90s, and it makes me miss Sega hardware. Like, 
Sega hardware was always just so technically advanced, like they really brought everything they could to their designs. But yeah, Sega Nomad. I'm not even gonna lie, this is pretty fun. 